The following program was produced by an independent community producer. The opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of the ECAT staff or board of directors. commander and our incoming commander could please join me here up at the dais. Thank you very much. And to each and every legionnaire here today, uh, first of all, my name is Walter Timothy. I have the privilege of serving you in the state senate. And I would first of all like to thank each and every one of you for your service in the most magnificent armed forces that the world has ever seen, the armed forces of the United States of America, a truly a global force for good. And this post is a force for good here in the great town of Easton and for the entire region. For that, I thank each and every one of you. This week in the State Senate, I offered citations honoring our outgoing commander and our incoming commander. So congratulations to both commanders. And with the permission of our commanders, I will present them now. Thank you. First of all, to Commander Poole reads as follows citation now, this is an official document which is recorded in the records of the senate clerk's office forever wow. commonwealth of massachusetts state senate official citation be it known that the massachusetts state senate hereby extends its congratulations to commander teresa padeco pool in recognition of your exemplary service as commander of american legion post seven and for your service to our veterans here in the commonwealth of massachusetts and in the great community of easton and be it further known that the Massachusetts State Senate commander extends its best wishes for continued success, that this citation be duly signed by the President of the State Senate and a copy thereof transmitted by the clerk. It has been signed by our Senate President, Senator Karen E. Spilka, attested to by our clerk, Michael Hurley, and offered by myself, one very proud State Senator, Walter F. Timothy. Commander Padeco Poole, thank you for all you've done in the service of our country and in the service of the great town of Easton. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for recognizing me. Oh, you're yeah. well deserved. Thank you. Very well deserved. Yeah, and we can take a picture yes. right there. I'd be honored. Okay, good. And Commander Riley, if I may, I know I'm jumping the gun by a couple of minutes, but Commander, thank you for your service in our great armed forces. And thank you for your service here to this wonderful post and to the community of Easton, which, does, as we all would agree, deserves the very best. And thank you. Now, big moment tonight, being becoming the commander of this August post, I offered this citation honoring you in the State Senate, and it reads as follows. Commonwealth of Massachusetts, State Senate official citation. Being known the Massachusetts State Senate, hereby extends its congratulations to our new commander, Elizabeth Riley, in recognition of your ascension to the prestigious position of commander of American Legion Post 7 and your service to our veterans and the great community of Easton. And of course, your service in our armed forces. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And be it further known, Commander, that the Massachusetts State Senate extends its best wishes for continued success in what I know will be a great term as the commander of Post 7, that this citation be duly signed by the President of the State Senate and a copy thereof, both attested and transmitted by our clerk. Commander Riley, it's been signed by our Senate President, Senator Karen E. Spilka, attested to by our clerk, Michael Hurley, and offered by myself, one very proud state senator of your service in our armed forces and proud of what you will do in your term as our commander. Congratulations, Thank Commander. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank
Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate Congratulations. it. Congratulations, Commander. Thank, Thank you. you. Timothy, the installation, um, as I said a few minutes ago, we're waiting for, oh, she's here. Yeah, um, very good. So um, if I could get a motion to suspend the meeting for the installation. Okay. Uh, second. second, Matt. All in favor? Aye. Very good. Okay. So if um, the district commander and assemble up here in the front and promote your ceremony for installation. All the offices, if we could move to the rear of the hall and we will uh, assemble there and move forward. Mm -hmm. Sergeant Vons, will you please present to the uh, incoming officers before me? My fellow Legionnaires, you have been chosen to fill the various offices of the post. Um, George S. Shepard, post, one, uh, post 7. I know you um, vindicate the trust that has been placed in you. I know you will fulfill every obligation required of you. Familiarize yourself with the duties of your offices and carry out those offices' duties with the same spirit from which the Amer uh, arose from the American Legion. The welfare and the success of this post depend on you, as does the preservation of integrity of the American Legion. Legion, Protect the good name of the American Legion with the people of the great nation. Help them know the Legion's purpose and policies. Remember the tolerance that um, animates us as members. Remember there is no rank among us, as for we all serve as equals. We are, st are all aiming for the same goals, the ideals of justice, freedom, and democracy. Remember, too, the cardinal principles of the American Legion are rehabilitation of all disabled veterans, uh, care of dependents of those who have answered the final call, care of those who are now suffering from their wounds and diseases. And what? The education of our children, the service to our community, and the state and nation. Please ra uh, raise your right hand and give your name when I uh, repeat after me. I, Richard Mangles, I, 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 do solemnly pledge myself to, solemnly pledge myself to perform faithfully and impartially, faithfully and impartially the duties of the offices of the American Legion I'm about to assume. I further pledge I am not a member of and I do, um, do not subscribe to the principles of any group of any group of, uh, opposed to our former government. Opposed to our former government. Hands down. Commander Teresa Poole Podesky, you have just completed a year of service to the American Legion and, um, and to the George S. Shepard Post 7. Records of the post indicate the quality of your service. Is my hope things you learned about the American Legion and the experience you gain will always be available. To you, um, available to those who follow you. On behalf of the department, Commander, I thank you for the splendid service you have rendered to the American Legion. Officers, please move to the right. The new elected uh, Commander, Teresa. Thank you. To you, Commander Elizabeth Riley, are entrusted with very important duties. 
You must teach and protect the cardinal principles of the American Legion throughout your post. You are entrusted with the supervision and the duties of all the officers of your post. The poor and the trouble will become to you, and you must see no veteran is turned away without full service. Loyalty to your post, loyalty to your post, to its membership, the state, and national organizations are obligations which you now assume. You are more than, than presiding over offices, meetings. You are guided by the Constitution and the decisions of the post body. Yes, the responsibilities of the year's programs is on your shoulders now. You must initiate programs and carry them through to completion. You must familiarize yourself with the traditions of your posts the Amer and the American Legion. By your sincere acceptance of this earnest performance of these duties, may the trust your fellow legionnaires have possessed in you. I, I extend you congratulations of the Department of Massachusetts, District 9. I wish you well to assume the responsibilities of your office. The uh, okay. Um, so do you have a chaplain? Yes. Um, do you want to offer a prayer? On cover. Lord, please help us newly elected to continue the work of the American Legion that we may help not only ourselves, but the community around us. Thank you. Amen. 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 Cover. <clears throat> My fellow Legionnaires, I present to you, please turn and face you. I present to you the office of your choice. I congratulate you on your selections you have made. You have chosen them. Now it's your duty to aid them in every way, help them, keep them, the American Legion faithful to its principles and ideals. Congratulations, these are your incoming officers. You can, you can clap hands. All right. That it? Congratulations. Thank you. I wish you Thank very you. Thank much you. success. If anything Thank I can you do for you, you, you let me know. Thank you for coming. Yes, you can wait. <laughs> so before I turn this back over to you, I just um, I want to thank you all again for inviting me. It's a pleasure. Um, I plan on working with everybody closely as I can. Um, I'll try to make it to as many meetings and things as I can. Um, as I, I, I spoke um, with you when you came to my clan bake, and that was yeah, very nice of you. She could have brought a couple more friends, but um, <laughs> uh, it's my goal to hopefully, so we start like, so we start sharing with each other what we're doing. So it's not just supporting my post or your post; it's supporting all the posts within just in the district. So hopefully, we'll get that done. Again, congratulations and thank you. So we thank get you. a picture of the district commander, the adjutant and Senior Vice Commander sure. of District 9. I'll do one more. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure Mr. Rivera will help out. Okay. Well, thank you. I'll see you on Thursday. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank could we have a motion to um, resume? Motion to resume the meeting, please. Uh, second. Second. Okay, is Ernie seconded? Do you, um, do you mind if we step out? Or? Yes, no, no, that's fine. For one second. Oh, wait a minute. She, she wants to do something. So we're going to resume the meeting. And uh, I'm going to give the gavel to the new commander, if we could get a picture. I'm passing the gavel to our new incoming commander, Elizabeth Riley and um, 
I hope all of you will give her the same respect and honor that you've given me over the past three years. And I wish you wonderful and good luck during the next two years. Thank you. You're welcome. We had the honor of having Teresa as our commander for the last three years, right? And um, has, as a small token of appreciation, we, we have this gift for you. Uh, It says Commander Award, presented to Teresa Podico Poole, in recognition of loyalty, devoted service, and leadership, in upholding the principles of the American Legion for God and country. We gratefully reward your term as Commander, Post 7 Eastern, 2020 to 2023. Wow. Thank you so much. For Sometimes when we're in leadership, we don't get the pat on the shoulder. Um, the good news is, as we, we are stepping back and saying, okay, you know, we, we did this all through the year, um, and we were very successful with this, the Lions Club stepped forward, and they said, okay, we'll pick it up. So I ch encourage all of you to continue. Continue, please, to save your um, clear white bottle caps. And these clear white bottle caps make a huge difference to individuals who are in need of prosthetics. Again, I don't care what military service organization uh, you serve with. The, the main mission is veterans helping veterans, and, and that's what we're doing. A simple act of saving bottle caps could very much make a huge difference, a huge impact to veterans in need of prosthetics. So if you know of anyone, a church, a neighbor, uh, a staff at a hospital who want to uh, do something for the fellow veteran community, you could encourage them to save bottle caps and drop them off at your nearest Lions Club. And I'd just like to say a few words. I'd like to thank the members of the Post for um, collecting the bottle caps, which um, we, I know we talked about a few months ago and I challenged everybody to bring in your bottle caps um, for this meeting for our new commander, Elizabeth Riley, who um, has taken this upon herself um, as a, a, a program that she highly supports and of course we support as well. Thank you everybody for bringing them in. And as she said, if um, you wanna continue bringing them in, we can um, donate them to the Lions Club who can then use them for these prosthetics for veterans. Thank you so much.
seated. We have a very special guest of honor here today, and I'd like to introduce her and have her come forward with a special presentation. Elizabeth Riley, Commander, VFW, Post 7 here in Easton. Welcome. <laughs> Hi, good morning. Thank you for having me. I wish two cents to um, thank you. From the bottom of my heart, a sincere gratitude to you and, and all of you for your collection of bottle caps. These little things may be simple, may be, you know, expendable. Blow them out. We don't need them. But to veterans, to veterans who are in need of prosthetics, these little bottle caps are collected and used to make prosthetics for our disabled veterans. So thank you for doing that, because not only did we reach our goal ahead of time, we're very successful this year in our bottle cap drive, but you made so many veterans happy. And by providing prosthetics to my comrades, you're renewing hope and confidence in them and increasing the quality of life. You know, they don't feel broken anymore. They don't feel um, different from anyone else. They can run with some prosthetics. They can jump. They can do, they can go skiing. There's so many different prosthetics out there, that's amazing. So thank you again from the bottom of my heart and from the American Legion Post 7 here in Easton. Thank you for collecting the bottle caps for us. And, and I highly encourage you, don't stop, mm -hmm. continue, because there are still veterans that are serving um, or that are waiting to have surgery um, or waiting to have a prosthetic. So your little um, act of kindness or in saving one little simple thing, one little bottle cap makes a huge difference in someone else's life. Dealer's Choice Auto Body and Sales with Robert Howard. Um, I'm sorry, I've been all uh, Bernard, uh, one of the workers here. And uh, Bob um, has done a bottle cap drive um, that our new commander, Elizabeth Riley, started a few months ago. And he did an awesome job bringing in plenty of bottle caps. And um, uh, we have a thank you letter for Bob. Here you go, and uh, thank you for collecting all these, and I know our new commander has a few words that she would like to say. Yes, the bottle cap drive, these, these little bottle caps, these clear white bottle caps, this little item makes a huge difference in veterans' lives, particularly those that require prosthetics, because by collecting these clear white bottle caps, we can turn these into prosthetics for our veterans. So thank you, because you've made a huge difference in so many veterans' lives by collecting these bottle caps. And the thing is, with prosthetics, we can make prosthetics that en enlighten and broaden a veteran's lives. Not only are you renewing hope and confidence in, in these individuals that require prosthetic, but you're allowing them to be active again. Because there's some prosthetics that have um, the ability for them to run. You have some prosthetics that have the ability for them to go hiking. You have some prosthetics for them to have the ability to do whatever they want to do in life. So the, they don't feel broken. They don't feel um, less than. Because prosthetics nowadays, with technology, we can make all kinds of prosthetics to meet their, um, any activity they want to do. Kayaking, hiking, um, horseback riding, whatever they want to do. So, so with individuals like yourself that take the time 
and like yourself that take the time and, and, and collect these and donate them for the military service organization. It's American Legion, it's the DAV, it's the Lions Club. But for individuals to collect and save these bottle caps, again, it makes a huge difference to veterans' lives, especially individuals that require prosthetics. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart to be part of the process of healing veterans mm -hmm. and allowing them to live a very um, full and quality life with, you know, with a prosthetic. And, and, and without you, um, we, we wouldn't have met our goal. We actually met our goal before our, mm -hmm. our end date. Mm -hmm. And um, again, with, with individuals like you, the, um, the whole process is stronger and it's better. And, and it just gives me a, a, a very comforting feeling, knowing we're not the organizations and people within the community that um, collect bottle caps. And, and what I encourage all of you is to continue to um, collect bottle caps. Because if it's not the American Legion that's collecting them, it's the DAV. If it's not the DAV, it's the Lions Club. But there's some organization out there that will collect these. And I appreciate you taking the time today to uh to be recognized because I know Thank you're you. busy having your business and and, and uh, fixing up cars, but um, the letter is just a small appreciation for um, our gratitude for for what you've done for us and, and the veteran community. Well. So. We thank want, you so we much. Want to thank you very much, and thank you for the opportunity to be a part of something that is so important yes. to all of the veterans and, and people that have uh, lost a limb or something in life. So we thank you for the opportunity to be a part of this. We thank appreciate you. it so yes. much. It, it's um, thank you again, Bob. It's a great thank feeling knowing that we have the support. Thank you. So thank you. Anytime. I appreciate thank you. it. Appreciate it. Thank you. is the junior American League um, baseball and he is going to share with us uh, the 2023 season and maybe some insights into the 2024 season both the junior league and the senior league Paul all yours thanks for having me thank you very much um, thanks good to see you guys again uh, a couple times I've been here now right uh, so Let's talk about 2023 baseball. Um, so first off, thanks very much for, for supporting us. Uh, it's great that the boys get to, to play uh, baseball for two months of the summer. Uh, without you guys allowing us to do that, it wouldn't be possible for them. So we get about 27, 28 young men that are 15 to 19 years old to still want to play baseball when they could be out on the beach or working or whatever else. Uh, that's a good thing. So thanks, thanks very much. Um, Mark uh, Whiteside is the uh, 19 and under team uh, manager. He can't make it tonight, so he sent me a few details from his season, so I'm going to give you that recap real quick. Um, so Mark's team is, again, it's 19 and under, so technically you could be 20 years old and still be on that team. So uh, this, uh, our, the way we work with the Legion teams here in Easton, uh, it's a little different than the other towns. We're, we're typically a younger team in both divisions. So... While a lot of towns will have you know, 20 and 19 year old players, we've got 18 and 17 year old players uh, playing against them. So in that older division, definitely a, one of the younger teams this year. Um, great group of kids. I'll tell you, I went to a, a number of their games and you know, they didn't win a ton of games. I think they only won up like three or four games, but boy, they had great attitudes. They were in every game. They just couldn't quite get over the, the hump there uh, to win some of them, but great group of kids. Um, really stuck together, and uh, they were a fun bunch, really were. Um, they, uh, Mark, I think Mark will be back next year. Um, he's got two boys on the team, so I'm pretty sure he'll be back next year. Uh, his, his kids become seniors in high school, um, and he's been coaching for maybe six years, five, six years, um, because he had an older son as well. Um, so successful year for them. Uh, it's not all about winning, right? So uh, they learned a lot of good lessons. Um, Sometimes losing will do that to you, but um, a lot of teamwork, camaraderie, so I, I think they had a very good season. Uh, as far as the 17-under team, again, same thing. Um, 
a few of our 17s moved up to play 19 and under. Um, felt like that level of competition would be better for them for their future. So they moved up. So we didn't have, I think we only had one 17-year-old. The rest were all 16 and 15. So again, we're playing against 17s. And again, in some cases, it could be 18s. Again, we're one of the younger teams. Um, and we're fine with that, honestly. Uh, it gives these kids a, a really good chance to play up in competition, prepares them for their high school seasons the next year. Um, so we took that challenge on. We played up in a, a higher division. Both league, both teams did this year. We played in uh, District 9, which is really in the Braintree, Quincy, Weymouth, uh, Dedham, Needham. So these are larger towns. They have a you know, bigger pool of players to pull from, right? So, But uh, we competed pretty well. We finished 7-10. and 10. Um, we made the playoffs for the second year in a row, which I think is a great accomplishment for these boys. Uh, last year at the end of the year, I talked to you guys, I told you we had some injuries at the end of the year, right? We had kids with sore shoulders and we were trying to avoid that, right? So we, we knock on wood, we did that. We had no injuries that way, so that was great. Um, the one thing with this season, well, I'll, I'll finish off. So we, we went into the playoffs. Um, we had to go to uh, North Attleboro on a Friday night. Uh, we only had nine players. I keep 18, I keep the roster maximum. Um, so anybody who wants to play, if, if we've got a spot, you can play. We didn't turn anyone away this year, again, which is great. Um, we only had nine kids, so we walked into our first playoff game with nine kids. You know, it's kind of a tough one, right? So um, North Attleboro was very good. North Attleboro, we ended up losing to, and, and we were eliminated the next night in Dedham. Again, shorthanded, really shorthanded in pitching the second night. Uh, but the kids battled. We, we were there. We, we came back. We were down. We came back and made it very close. Uh, so very proud of the boys, the way they, they fought, kept, didn't give up. Um, but we bowed out after two games. Um, but in all honesty, I think one of the things that happened this season made it a little bit different than most seasons is we start the first weekend of June. And we go to the very last weekend of July and into early August if you, if you continue playing into the playoffs. Uh, but because of all the rain, if you remember, from May and June and even into July, I mean, I had a July 4th party in my house and it was pouring rain in the whole time. So those games, they don't cancel. They just push them off. And they say, okay, instead of playing two or three nights this week, you're going to play five. Well, I'll tell you what, after four weeks of five games in one week, those boys are tired. I was tired. <laughs> you know? uh, they were tired. And I, you know, I'm sure you can attest to it. They were done, you know. So I think while it was, it was uh, disappointing that the season was over, I'm pretty sure the next morning they were pretty happy about that. It was just a lot of baseball. One of the things that I went back to the league with and said, you know, you guys probably should rethink how you do this. Uh, I don't think it's healthy for them to play that much, uh, mentally or physically. So that was a challenge, a bit of a grind, to be honest with you. But they hung in there. I, I don't know that I would have been able to hang in there, but they did, they did a good job. Uh, so I'm very proud of how they, how they uh, competed this year. Um, saw a lot of good young players coming up for Easton, so uh, it's a good future. Um, the North Attleboro team that I, I talked about that we had three very good close games with, they actually went on and played in the state tournament, went to the semifinals. So, you know, we were playing good baseball, and uh, I think we should, they should, I told them to hold their heads high, and, you know, I think that was, uh, it was a good season. Um, as far as next year, uh, I, I think we'll have a 17 and under team. I won't be part of it. I'm going to step away. I've, I've had a couple of years. I'm thinking I'm going to spend my son's last year being a dad, just watch from the bleachers, kind of enjoy that. Um, I think it'd be good for him too. <laughs> um, but uh, that'll, that's probably going to be it for me. So I probably won't be back again. I thank you guys so much, you guys and gals. I, I'll be honest with you. So I know you've got big shoes to fill. I'll be honest. She is. Uh, she's been fantastic for us. You guys, I don't know that you know, she probably hasn't shared it with you, how many games she's come to for both teams. Uh, she's traveled with us. Um, but more importantly, like I said, these are young kids. They Defeat is hard, right? Losing's hard, and they can get down. So to have Teresa there after a game, to give a little pep talk and just remind them that, you know, it's not really about the win or the loss. It's about the whole process, right? And uh, that was just, you know, I can't tell you how many times she picked them up and even when I was down and, and kind of like, you know, I just want to go home, you know, she had nice things to say and, and very uplifting. So thank you so much, really, uh, truly. Uh, the kids knew who she was, you know, <laughs> went over and said hello to her all the time because she was at every game, you and your husband, I appreciate that um, very much. So any questions? Uh, 
Well, I think I covered everything. What was the record? Uh, our record was seven and ten. Oh. Uh, so again, they pack 18 games in, so it's supposed to be a six-week season, uh, but with the rain, it was really four. <laughs> really became four weeks. That's uh, a. It was a lot. Yeah. Um, go ahead. To qualify to be on the team, do you have to be an Eastern resident? You have to be an Eastern resident, and you have to be. And based upon your age, it'll depend upon the team you try out for. So we have tryouts. Fortunately, we haven't had to cut anyone uh, in a couple of years. So the majority of the people would be playing high, playing at uh, Oliver Ames. Correct, and I apologize. You don't have to be an Eastern resident. Um, the American Legion Baseball League, the way they set it up, you have to be within. So. And a, a good point. We had a, a, a boy uh, from Stoughton play on the 19 over team. I had a boy from Stoughton play on the uh, 17 over team. Great kids, uh, great contributors, really happy they were there. But they have to live within a certain mile radius of Easton, of all of Rams, actually. They can't live any closer. They have to, be, they have to live closer to all of Rams than they do to any other school around. Stoughton doesn't have an American Legion team, so they, and they did both live closest to us. So they were able to play for us, which was what they wanted. Uh, they were folks that I knew actually from Stoughton. So sorry, you did. They don't have to be from Easton, but 99% but no, no. of them are, are Easton residents. So you could actually go out and recruit in other towns, or is that not allowed? You could. Again, you have to. You have to get a waiver from that town, especially if they have an American Legion team, um, to release them to play for Easton. And a lot of times that that won't happen, especially if it's a good player. They're not going to let them do that, which. It's fair enough. That a lot that doesn't so the teams can't can't recruit and build teams like that. Yeah, they like to keep it within your town. The only exception is if you have, like we had a couple of boys that that uh, go to Zaverian High School, Zaverian Brothers High School in Westwood. They can actually play for Westwood or for Easton because they live in Easton and they they play for Easton. So, but uh, I would say 90% of the boys that played uh, played either freshman, JV, or or all uh, varsity baseball this year for all of do the kids, uh, do they identify themselves with the American Legion as a sponsor? Or oh, yeah. Is there uh, like a sticker on their oh, uniform? Or? Yeah, good point. I wish I, brought, I should have worn my jacket. Um, every uniform, uh, every jersey that the coaches wear, um, we have to wear an uh, American Legion patch. Uh, our hats say Post 7 and um, Easton on the front. <coughs> you can't, you, you would be uh, thrown out of the game, but you can't. Can't go onto the field if you don't have that patch on, the American Legion patch. As a, um, <coughs> excuse me, as a potential fundraiser for our team, can we get those jackets? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I don't see why not. So uh, we get them from Piesco's Sporting okay. Goods. So we can yeah. certainly do that next spring. Um, Ted Cazzola will still be part of it. Um, so I'll, and I'll, I'll, I'll be around. Uh, so I can have Ted work on that for sure. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Well, My only like thing is, if you get a jacket, you better be at the game. Oh, we got to be at the game. Yeah. Yeah, we play at Frothingham Park. Um, yeah. I think I got the schedules to you last year, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Those schedules changed literally every day yeah. because of the rain. I, yeah. So I apologize. It was difficult, but um, we, they'd love to have you down there, yeah. down at Frothingham. Beautiful place to oh, watch a game. You were playing with the playoffs without a bottle. What kind of score was that? <coughs> so the playoff game in Attleboro, uh, we were down. I think it was three nothing in the third inning, and quite honestly, we, I, the coaching staff had a decision to make. We only have so many pitchers that we can use in a given time, so they can only throw so many pitches. So, do we keep throwing our better pitchers that we had left at this team and try to win tonight, knowing we had to play tomorrow, or do we wait and say, okay, this one's probably over. We're probably not going to beat this team now. Do we just save our pitching for Sunday night? So that's what we did. We saved for Sunday night, and we said we thought we had a pretty good chance. To be honest, if we had all of our players there that yeah. night, yeah. our best pitchers, yeah. I'd have loved to gone after North Attleboro that night. Uh, we played two very good games. Our two best games of the year were against North Attleboro in the regular season. We lost 3 nothing and 7-5. to five. So we know we could have beat them. Um, and we would have loved to beat them. We got a little rivalry, rivalry with those guys. Uh, so. Uh, but I think at, at one point you just have to say, okay, this isn't our night. We're going to save for tomorrow night. And I, the Denver game was pretty close. I, I actually thought we had a chance there, uh, but you know it didn't work out in the end. So um, yeah. Oh, so I, it ended up we ended up getting slaughtered that night. So five innings, 12, 12 nothing. I think it was. Um, 
And again, this is the character of these boys, right? They showed up the very next night, less than 24 hours later, to have at it. We had to go to Dedham, play under the lights there, and they were they were game. They were there to play. They were ready. It was good. They were very good on on that Saturday night. Had a couple couple, couple tough calls that night. Yeah, make or break you sometimes, and uh, that did so. Good. When you say you were short-handed on a couple of times, mm. this means because they are physically exhausted from playing all the games, or the weather out. Uh, uh, yeah, good question. So a uh, combination of um, vacations, <coughs> kids are on vacation. The other thing too for the playoffs, they play them on the weekends. We don't play during the weekends. We play during the week. There are a lot of kids that play AAU baseball. Okay, they pay a lot of money to play AAU baseball. Okay. That's on the weekends. If you paid two thousand dollars for your kid to play on an AU team, guess where he's going on the weekends? Yeah, he's going right. So we ran into that um, last year. The district we were in didn't play games on the weekends, playoff games. This district did. That left us a little short-handed, but um, what are you gonna do, right? I was happy with the nine kids that we had, right? Both yeah. nights they were, they fought. I, I'll take that. And they were good players. All eighteen of them were. So. Do you have any females? Uh, we don't have any young ladies to play. No, nope. I've never had a, a. I've only been here two years. I haven't had anyone, uh, any females, and and they're welcome. I believe it's a co-ed league. I don't think they can stop that. So, hey, if they can hit and field and throw, that's fine with me. Come on down. Well, we thank you for your participation. It really means an awful lot, both to them and to us. Yeah. Yes. Thank I, you. Yep. Thank you, Paul. I've gotten more out of it than than, than they've gotten from me. That's for not sure. That's thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Uh, so the question he asked, I'm sorry, uh, do we have a party? Yeah, we have an end of the year. We had an end of the year party at one of the uh, one of the parents' houses, and uh, a nice pool party with pizza. I brought pizzas down, and we had a really good time until it started pouring raining out again. <laughs> Thanks, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, before. Thank you.